Aloha and good morning, everyone. The market is in a very strong uptrend. Great session on Thursday all around. The futures market look good. The, right now, as I make this video, the futures market looks really good. S&P 500, Dow Jones Industrial Average, and NASDAQ up about 0.15% after hours. The Russell 2000 is up, Russell 2000 is up about 0.25%. The S&P 500 is hitting new highs. The NYSC is hitting new highs. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is hitting new highs. The NASDAQ is hitting new highs. The NASDAQ 100 is hitting new highs. The only index not hitting new highs is IWM. And it is still possible that we're trying to build out a slightly broadening top formation. But if the IWM can break out above this upper trend line, uh, it's good to go. The broadening top formation is void. But if it comes back and does not bounce off this right now resistance line that will become support line, if we re-enter the broadening top formation, that will just make it an even bigger broadening top formation. So I'm still very, very you know curious about this index. It's supposed to be leading, and instead it's lagging. Bullish sentiment is still extremely insane. With, like I said, investors' intelligence bulls at 63%, bears under 17%. The overall crowd seems to be a little giddy. But, you know, I am personally a little nervous about the market right here, despite the other indexes hitting new highs. So maybe that's a contrarian point of view. But the good news is I don't invest based on my feelings. Used to. Don't ever, won't ever do it again. Never, ever, ever. It's completely rule-based. So let's get to the rule-based long positions for Friday session. There were three new long positions. The highest quality one of the bunch is Ted U. Ted U is basically bouncing off a strong support level right here. You can see that once former resistance becomes support, see it becomes support here in September, October, here in November, and then it comes back down and it tests that line here. And now this time it bounces on extremely strong volume. And you can see BOP exploded to a higher green level and a higher level than the most recent um, BOP green levels that BOP had. So this is a nice bounce. This is a high quality, can slim quality stock. It was initially flagged in my can slim scan. It was also confirmed in my price volume BOP scan and it was also my tertiary scan. So it's a guaranteed new long position. So two top scans and then confirmed a third one and the signal is great. The high volume, the volume surge, the BOP surge, the bounce right off the support line. If we're wrong, it's very, very clear where our stop loss is. A move below 1405. I will be completely out of TEDU. My limit order will be at 1445. Since it was a can slim stock, that's 2% and 1% more for bringing the price volume bop for a 3% long position. The other new long this evening is a very thin name, but it's a high quality name. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Or what, I, what do I got to do to get the... Uh, I want to see the high day close in this. But I guess, there we go. Okay, so you can, now you can see that it's closing at 27. 2070 after opening at 2065. MLVF is a former CanSlim quality stock. It's I haven't updated my CanSlim scan in a long time, so it remained in that scan. So it was initially flagged in my CanSlim scan, but then it also showed up in my Max Green Bop for five days scan, and it was also in my tertiary scan. So technically, it was in three scans. But MLVF is no longer a can slim quality stock, but it was, and it probably will be again. And after an, a note offering today or something like that, huge volume surge with BOP remaining max green. We have back-to-back -back pocket pivot point signal days with a nearly bullish engulfing candle with the, us closing higher than where we open. So like I said, it was in three scans. The signal is a back-to-back -back pocket pivot point signal, huge volume surge with max green bop and max green bop for the past five days, and a nice candle move with the stock closing near the highs. I will be going long with a limit order at 2075, and my final cut loss level will be 2005, and it's my only cut loss level. So if it trades below 2005, I'll be out of MLVF on a closing basis only. Remember, small cap regional bank stocks never get hard stops on the books. I've been shaken out before. I made a mistake recently and accidentally set stops on GABC just uh, it's instinctively without thinking. And half of it got hit. And, of course, GABC is higher now just to show you. So that is why I always like to obey the rule of no stops ever on regional bank stocks. So if it closes below, excuse me, MLVF, if it closes below 2005, I will be completely out. MLVF 
former Cansom quality stock. So I'll give it like 1% for that. Also, if it was traded 50,000 shares per day, it would have made my price volume bop surge scan. So I'll give it like, you know, kind of like a percent for that, I guess you could say. And then it was also, like I said, in the bop scan. So 10 or a half percent for each of those two scans. So let's do it the real way. 1% for being in my max screen bop scan. It was also confirmed in my tertiary scan, so we can take it. And then I'll give it like 0.5% for being a former Cansom quality stock and knowing that it will be one in the future. And I'll also give it 0.5% for being a price volume bop surge scan quality stock. It just didn't meet the volume requirements. My scan tries to cut the number of stocks I look down first before I go to my bigger, more broad scan. And it rules out all stocks that don't average at least 50,000 shares per day. But if this one did, it would have made it. So 0.5 for former canceling, 0.5 for price volume BOP, 1% for BOP scan, total of a 2% new long position for MLVF. And then the final long position is an ad signal in EGBN. This is actually the highest quality signal this evening. EGBN was in my Cansom quality scan. It was in my price volume BOP surge scan. And it was in my green BOP for 20 day scan. So that's three legitimate scans. And then it was also my tertiary volume BOP um, price move higher scan. Volume's got to be over the 50-day volume average. So it was in four total scans, so that's really good. The signal is a pocket pivot point signal through the 50-day moving average. This pocket pivot point signal is coming with a surge in green bop to max green bop, and it's gapping above the 5, 10, 20, and 50-day moving average. If our first cut loss level is a move below 60, 90, and our final cut loss level is a move below 59, 25, that gives us a great possible over 4 to 1 risk-reward ratio looking at a measured move from here in November to the December highs of 33%. You could use today's low a day as your final cut loss on the position if you want to, but I'm going to give EGBN room to work because this is a very heavy accumulation signal. I really like the chart pattern, so I definitely want to use two different stops, 60.90 and 59.25 on this one. My limit order will be at 62.20, so 2% for canceling, 1% for being uh, in the bot for green bot for 20-day scan, 1% for being price volume bop. That's a total of 4%. Since it's an ad signal, we half it. So it's 2% of my account capital in this long signal. And don't forget, for the past three weeks, all I've been doing is having stops hit intraday on stocks that I raise stops on and or stocks that, that hit my final cut loss level like iRobot gap down this morning below both my stops. So I removed one, just made one stop, which was this low right here. It opened and knocked me out of the entire position. I'm now moving that capital along with some other capital raise like from UVXY, TVX, and moving that into the new long position. So even though MLVF is 2%, EGBN is 2% and TEDU is 3%. I obviously will have to split whatever capital I have remaining into these positions, but I've remained fully invested for three weeks just moving capital around. All right, everyone, great luck on Friday. The market looks good after hours. We'll see if this spills over into the session on Friday. The only thing I did not like about Thursday's session is we couldn't close at the highs. If we would have closed against the high at the highs, there wouldn't have been one thing I could have complained about, but there's one thing, so I will. Aloha.